And hello again, everyone. My name is Franklin. I'm one of the two co-founders of NorCal SCI, which stands for the Northern California Spinal Cord Injury Foundation. Welcome to tonight's presentation of Cooking and Nutrition with Arash and Shelley, Packed Lunches and Meals on the Go. We have a really fun uh, presentation that the two of them have put together. So looking forward to uh, starting that. Uh, but before we do, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, everyone has been muted in order to eliminate any background distraction. So that's why you're not hearing a whole lot of noises. Uh, we do uh, welcome questions from the audience and we will ask the Arash and Shelly to answer those uh, throughout their presentation. So feel free to pop those over to me via the chat feature on your Zoom stream. Uh, secondly, uh, these presentations, uh, along with all of our virtual presentations, are now being presented thanks to the generosity of our donors. So we're grateful to them uh, that continue to support us so that we could bring uh, presentations like uh, tonight's to you. And finally, as we do with all of our presentations, we are recording tonight's uh, session and we will make it available to everyone who has registered uh, tomorrow morning. It'll be in your inboxes. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, if anyone else that you want to share it with, you can feel free to do so. So let's get started. Then let me introduce uh, Arash and Shelly, who are certainly no strangers to you all. But uh, Shelly is a life, lifelong advocate of nutrition. When she isn't working with her patients, uh, she can be found in her greenhouse or kitchen. She obtained her BS degree in nutritional science from San Jose State University, my alma mater, in 2012. Uh, and received her master's degree in public health in 2016 from the University of New England and has been working um, at Santa Clara Valley Medical Center, one of the top spinal cord injury rehabilitation hospitals in the country since 2013. She currently works in the outpatient clinic of the hospital, uh, seeing primarily those uh, individuals with spinal cord injuries and also spends time working with complex uh, GI gastroenterology issues and the outpatient clinic, and she's also a member of NorCal SCI's advisory board. Uh, Arash uh, experienced his uh, C5, C6 incomplete spinal cord injury in 2012 as a result of a fall. He has given numerous talks and shared his story of perseverance, recovery, and challenging limits to audiences large and small, including a TEDx talk. He's a Bay Area native and credits his California upbringing for his love of the outdoors, nature, and cooking, activities that he still cherishes as he continues to travel, explore, and enjoy new experiences. And speaking of new experiences, he and his wife, Britta, uh, just had a baby boy a few months ago. Uh, so he is married with a daughter and a newborn baby boy. And Arash also serves on the board of directors of NorCal SCI. So welcome Arash, welcome Shelly. Thanks for your time again. Look forward to seeing what you have cooked up. Take it away, please. All right, thank you, Franklin, as always. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Arash, hi everyone. Welcome back. Hello. Yeah, I'm excited because uh, I feel like these last few times where Shelly and I did these together, we get a little spoiled. And I, uh, as much as I like, uh, doing the cooking stuff, it's way more fun when we're doing it together. So excited to do it again. Thanks, Shelly. Yeah, yeah, glad to, glad to watch and participate. And by the way, this is not beer, okay? This is cold brew. I have a long drive after this, okay? So no judgment here. I looked like wine to me, so that's where I was gonna go. Yeah, and it's not soda either, not a fan of soda. So <laughs> this is cold, cold brew. <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough. Um, Shelly, I think we have a lot to say about this topic because uh, yeah. I think you and I both were really excited about doing this. I'm really excited about doing this topic because I think lunches and lunches on the go are an easy way to get bored, let's just say. Um, you know, sandwiches, PBJ, you know. Um, and I, I really wanna try to encourage people to expand their horizons. And, uh, mm -hmm. what, about, what about you? Um, I appreciate this topic a lot because a lot, a lot of my patients, um, it takes a lot to get out the door and get to appointments, get the therapies, and, and I really appreciate all the work involved, and it's, it's very easy for my patients to slip into the fast food drive, drive in, you know, and just pick up something easy cer certain days when you have a busy day, um, so this is a really important topic, and um, you definitely can pack something healthy and bring with you on those long days. And I'm hoping this helps um, give you another option when you're out and about. 
Yeah, and I think uh, obviously we're still in COVID times. I know people probably aren't out and about as much as they maybe used to, or if you're maybe they're not going into work, uh, maybe they are, I don't know. But I think the, the lessons from today can be really helpful. And I think whether you're going into like a work thing or not, um, you know, like Shelly said, maybe you're going to a doctor's appointments, maybe you're doing a road trip. I always pack my lunch on a road trip. Uh, I've, I've driven down to LA or Southern California many, many times in the last few years. And if anybody you done, has done that drive, you know, Highway 5, there's not a lot of great options that aren't fast food. Mm -hmm. um, so I always pack my own lunch and just go to the rest area and, you know, eat my own food. So think of it, think of this as, a, you know, tools you can use for whatever context it is. It doesn't have to be like a specific thing. So um, yeah. we, we, I think in, in coming up with some of these ideas, um, as far as the cooking side of it goes, I was trying to think of things mostly that um, you don't need to refrigerate. Um, everything I'm making tonight could definitely go a few hours without being refrigerated. A couple of things will be a little bit better if you do. Uh, I'm talking about the morning of, not you know in prepping like we are now, but um, but just something to keep in mind that um, that's that's something fun we're doing. So um, yeah, should we jump right into it, Shelly? Yeah. Let's do it. I, I cool. love these. All right. I'm going to ask my camera person to come here. All right. So all good here. Good. See me all right? Yeah. All right. Cool. So um, to dispel the notion that, that, that you have to have like a sandwich or something to make a, a pack lunch or not, I want to talk about a few different things uh, about packing lunches and healthy lunches and substantial lunches. Um, I think it's important to try to use convenience um, whenever possible, but I would say not always. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, so I want to talk about that kind of what, what's a good use of convenience in terms of what things to buy and use. And another thing I want to mention is just try to, um, integrate your plan for your lunches let's say it'll it, it'll help you if you plan it when you're like making dinner or something because i mean i know if you're going to effort of making dinner and then the next morning you're like oh my god what do i do for lunch and you have to start all over from scratch it's a lot harder to do and less efficient than if you're like while you're making dinner you do something to prep or you're using some of the components from your dinner um as a lunch the next day aside from just eating your leftovers because I'm trying to do something not that because that's an easy way to do lunch too. Um, so I want to just start with mentioning a, a couple things. Um, let's see. I want to get a couple things cooking. I'm not going to do a lot of cooking. It's going to be a lot of assembling and with Shelly integrating a ton of great information. But uh, I am going to um, cook a couple things right now and 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 uh, get them going so we can spend the rest of the time assembling the lunch. So if you follow me over here. Simple thing we got going on right here. I'm just going to hard boil some eggs. Um, and I know this is like nothing too um, groundbreaking here, but um, I think the way I've learned about hard boiling eggs um, makes it really, really delicious. And also um, it's one of the few animal products I, I tend to eat still. And um, if you do it this way, it'll be guaranteed to, to work well. So. I like to do, I know there's a million different ways to hard boil eggs, everyone's got their way. I like this way. I like to put the egg in a spoon. I got my water boiling and I like to just gently lower it into the pot because you'd be surprised even just a, a gentle little tap on the bottom of the pot and it can crack. And everyone has a different preference for hard boiled eggs. I go with the seven minute egg. Um, I feel like it gives me the perfect amount of cookedness um, of the egg on the inside. Obviously, if you want a little softer, runnier, you can go like a six minute egg, um, or you can go longer if you really want to cook it more. But that's when it turns, starts to turn gray in the middle. And I'm not a fan of that. So I got my water boiling on kind of medium high. And I'm going to, this is something I actually do pretty specifically. So I'm looking at my clock, I'm going to go seven minutes, let these boil. I've got a bowl with ice water here ready to go um, for afterwards when we pull them out. So these are going to cook. I've also got one pan here heating up that I'm going to use for, I'm going to saute a block of tofu. Um, this, I've gotten some requests from folks, um, which I really appreciate. I love it when you guys 
reach out to us or Franklin or me or Shelly and tell me like what you'd like me to integrate. Um, as you know, I'm mostly plant-based, so I'm doing it with tofu, but this is like, if you're not plant-based, think you can do chicken breast, you can do salmon, you can do a piece of fish, you know, just some kind of like lean, um, healthy-ish, you know, protein um, that you can use. So I'm, I'm cooking these now and you'll see how I use these later on, but um, I want to get these started so these can get done. And then we can move on to the other, uh, actually assembling the lunches. So I'm going to just put a little bit of vegetable oil in this frying pan. I'm going to, I have a block of tofu that I just cut in half lengthwise. And all I'm going to do is saute the tofu in the pan um, for a few minutes on each side, just cook it up a little bit and then, um, and then have that ready to go for, um, for the next few things we're going to make. So did you press that, Arash? You pressed it? Yeah, so this is, I love this. This is the super firm tofu that I bought. And I basically don't need to press it. It comes really, really, it's even less watery than extra firm. Mm -hmm. um, this you can buy at like any grocery store. It's in like a green package, um, but it's like the extra, or they call it like super firm or something. So, mm -hmm. um, so yes, but if you're not using that, then, um, then, um, very firm and then press out the water as much as you can. So, Shelly, can I pass it to you to maybe mention yeah. some thoughts on, on everything while I get these going? Yeah, um, I wanna chat about protein a little bit because it seems like we're on that topic right now. Um, there is a misconception out there. I talk about protein a lot with my patients. There's a misconception that, um, that you have to have a ton of protein um, specifically with a spinal cord injury. Um, but overall protein deficiency is really rare in the United States. It's more of a global issue in other parts of the world. And most Americans do exceed the recommended amount of protein. Um, there are certain risks associated with having too much protein, um, calcium and bone loss, renal function, um, that kind of thing. And it, especially if you eat a lot of saturated fat um, and a lot of um, heavy animal protein. I have chickens, so I, I love having eggs once in a while fresh from my chickens. Um, it's not really used efficiently in the body. If you eat protein in excess of what you need, it can be kind of burdensome, burdensome for bones and, and for kidneys and liver. Um, basically, when you're newly injured with a spinal cord injury, your, your protein needs are very, very high. Um, if you're interested in knowing exactly how high, it's, it's roughly two grams per kilogram of your body weight, which is really high, a brand new acute injury. And then after that, your needs kind of taper down to kind of where um, someone with, without an injury would be over time. Um, exceptions for that would be if you end up with some kind of a pressure ulcer or skin breakdown, then your protein needs go back up, um, infection, that kind of thing. But Generally, um, it's pretty easy to get enough protein. If you just include a little bit of protein in your, in your diet with, with every meal, um, you're not at risk for protein deficiency or anything like that. It just, if you're otherwise healthy, um, you don't have to worry about slamming protein powders, muscle milk, all that stuff, you really don't. So um, what Arash is doing right now with the plant-based protein, tofu is great. There's lots of benefits to tofu and I'll have more to say about that. Um, if there's time, but um, I just wanted to make it really clear that you just don't have to, you don't have to get a ton of protein in your diet. Um, if you're, if you're healthy and you don't have any skin issues and you're a ways out from your initial injury. Awesome. Thank you, Shelly. Um, yeah, I've got the tofu going here. And again, this is where um, use whatever you want in this case. So um, this would be a really good, back to my point of, of planning for your dinners. If you make something the night before, if you're grilling right now, it's still summer, people are still grilling, grill a little extra of tofu or fish or whatever it is, chicken, whatever you're making, and then you use that, keep that little bit to do what I'm about to do. So uh, I'm doing this now, but this is easily something that if you just put in that little bit of planning, it can really save you. I've got two more minutes for my eggs, so that'll give me just enough time to mention something that I think is really helpful for pack lunches, which is um, the way to kind of kick up your pack lunch game is uh, one thing I will suggest is to have appropriate containers. Um, it makes it really, really hard if you have small containers to have enough food, let's say, 
or to, to, to integrate some of the things that I'm going to talk about um, tonight, because I think maybe some people might not be as prone to pack their lunches because they're like, well, I don't want to eat a soggy salad or I don't want to have this thing that like just doesn't taste as good the next day. I promise you, if you do what I'm doing, you will, the, the food will taste great um, and you won't have some of those issues that sometimes people bring up. Um, one other thing, I, to my point of like convenience when really helpful, I just want to show you guys an example of what I'm talking about. These are your friends when it comes to packing lunches. This is shredded carrots that I just bought in the bag. This is shredded green cabbage that I just bought in the bag. Uh, and then I've got a bag of baby spinach. This is maybe my favorite um, pack lunch ingredient. And you'll see why in just a moment, because you can pretty much put it into anything. And it's like, boom, like little boost of nutrition right there. So um, this is where sometimes I like to do my own prep most of the time. Cost-wise, it's more efficient for me to do this myself. But when you're prepping for lunch, feel free to do this. This is not expensive. This is like a dollar for a big bag of carrots, you know? So um, feel free to, to use that convenience to your advantage. Um, I'm pretty much at time with my egg. So I'm gonna pull them out, put them into the ice bath so, so they stop cooking immediately. And so I can actually handle them with my hands in a few minutes. Um, and I'm gonna flip my tofu and Shelly, maybe I'll pass it back to you um, for a moment. And, and then I've, I, we talk about this all the time. Do not be afraid of tofu. Um, the majority of the people that I've talked to have just really not, not known how to prepare tofu. You end up with just bland um, tofu pretty much. If you get the water out or buy the super firm tofu that Arash is talking about, um, it will take on the flavor of whatever you pair it with, whatever sauce. Um, so when, when you think of tofu, it's possible that maybe you just kind of had it and it, it maybe it had too much water, or maybe it didn't soak up the flavor and it was bland, but tofu is really, really healthy. Um, there, it's really unique. It's widely used um, for estrogenic and anti-estrogenic effects on the body. Um, so th there's been con some conflicting issues with tofu in the past. You might've heard that, that maybe it was dangerous to have that it, you know, could cause breast cancer, but but recent studies, um, large studies, suggest that it, it either has beneficial or even just neutral effects on various health concerns, um, conditions. So it's nutrient dense. It's a, it's a nutrient dense source of protein that can be consumed several times a week without any issues. A great alternative to red and processed meat, which I talk a lot about being that cardiovascular disease is, is such a high risk for, for those in the SCI community. Um, I can go on and on about the nutrients uh, with tofu, including B vitamins and fiber, potassium, magnesium, super high quality protein. Um, it's considered a complete protein. So if that's a, like something that you've heard of, like I need to eat animal protein because I, I need a complete protein. No, um, soy is, is complete has all nine essential amino acids that the body can't make um, that have to be obtained from your diet. Um, it, it's just, it's a superfood. So once you learn how to prep tofu and, um, and flavor it and, and integrate it into your recipes, um, honestly, you'll be a huge fan. And it's a whole lot cheaper than uh, animal protein, especially right now. It's ridiculous right now. I can't even believe the prices. So tofu is kind of where it's at if you want to save some money and you want a good quality protein that's healthy. I love and Shelly, we have a question. Um, yeah. How much, what is the recommended uh, tofu consumption? So several times a week. I mean, three times a week. Um, tofu comes in blocks. So I don't know, maybe half a block or something like that um, would be a good portion size, depending on your size. If you're um, if you're six foot six and, and you know, <laughs> Um, propel your wheelchair and have a lot of muscle up on top, then you might need more protein than that, more tofu than that. Um, if you're tiny and petite, um, then possibly less. But I would say generally a serving of it three times a week should be perfectly fine in a diet. How many ounces do you think, like per serving, would you say? Four, maybe four ounces. Okay. Like maybe look at the size of the palm of your hand and start there. I like to use that for protein in general. So just look at the size of your palm and start there. Okay. And I actually have a question. Uh, the person is asking which section of the store can they find, typically find tofu? 
They can usually find it in the um, refrigerated section. It depends on the grocery store. It's, it is always going to be refrigerated. Sometimes the stores will have their own section, like kind of next to meat or dairy. There'll be a section where they might have like tofu and plant-based products. Sometimes they integrate the tofu kind of in with the, um, not dairy usually kind of depends, but, um, mm -hmm. but it's refrigerated. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Um, and Shelly brought up a good point that it's very inexpensive compared to um, animal mm -hmm. products in terms of okay. a protein source. Mm -hmm. And I shop okay. at Lucky's, and, and for my reference at Lucky's, it's right next to the uh, salads, the box lettuce and the bag lettuce. It's like right there by the mushrooms. That's right. That's the same with, um, uh, with like Safeway and whatnot. So, um, okay. So let's go to our first, my tofu is pretty much done. I'm just going to turn the pan off and let it sit for a few minutes. That looks but, good. <laughs> yeah, and all I did, guys, was just I gave it a little bit of soy sauce and black pepper. That's it. Doesn't need to go crazy because it's going to get flavor from other things. So if you don't do soy sauce, you can use tamari, you can use brags, whatever you want, or just regular salt. Doesn't matter. Just a little seasoning is fine. You can also keep it plain if you want. So the first thing I'm going to assemble for our packed lunch, and again, I have my nice big container. I like these size containers because I can pack a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to make a simple rice noodle salad um, and we're going to call back to uh, something we made two sessions ago, which was a peanut sauce. So I'm not going to go into how I made that. I want to see that. I talked about it in the sauces and dressings session we did a couple times ago. It's just peanut butter and some other stuff thinned out. So it's kind of like a sauce. If you ever have like Vietnamese food, you ever have like a Vietnamese noodle salad. This is where I'm drawing inspiration from. So I've got my rice noodles. I cooked these ahead of time. And now I'm using convenience. Watch how easy it is. I take a handful of shredded cabbage, stick that in there. I take a handful of shredded carrots, put that in there. I always say that colorful food makes me want to eat it more. So I've got some good components here. I've chopped up some other things for some of the other things that I'm going to make. So I've got a little cilantro. I'm going to just sprinkle some of that on top. And the tofu, which is cooling down, I'm going to put that on top of, um, of this. And here's the important thing. Don't dress the salad now. Separate your dressing. This is kind of a common thing with a couple of things I'm making. So again, I've got my peanut sauce here. I'm going to put it into... Um, a separate little container. Really, 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 I highly recommend you go and you buy a couple of like big containers for something like this and then small containers for like dressings and sauces and whatnot. I kind of ran out, so I'm going to use like a jar or something. So this is basically it, guys. I'm basically going to, um, I'm going to, let's see, where do I put this? My tofu should be cool enough, um, but this is such a lovely lunch. And look at that, that's got some nice color on it. So all I'm gonna do is just slice it up in whatever size piece I want. And this is probably a lot, I don't even need to do all this, but, um, but I'm just cubing this up. That's like a half a block of tofu. So it is quite a bit, but bringing my lunch back, now I've got this, it's a little hot, that's okay. My fingertips are numb. Look at that, how nice is that? Little Vietnamese noodle salad, this is filling. Mm -hmm. You've got some vegetables, you've got some fresh herbs. And of course I've got my peanut sauce. And again, remember, I'm not gonna do it now because I don't have time, but remember, keep that separate and then right before you eat it, put the sauce in. I like these containers because I like closing this and then I can shake everything up and dress it that way, move it around. So you wanna have a little extra space in there to be able to toss it. So lunch number one is done. Rice noodle salad, I'm gonna put this aside. So yeah, Arch, a couple of questions. Oops. Yeah, sorry, Shelly, go ahead. Go ahead. A uh, couple of questions. How do you get the tofu to not stick to the pan? You just use a little bit of oil, I, not a lot. Um, I use maybe about a teaspoon and a half of oil. Um, so that's it. Okay. And uh, next question is from a tofu virgin, as he calls himself. What does tofu taste like? 
what should I Whatever expect? Whatever you want to flavor it. Yeah. With. Okay. So tofu is an empty, it's a, it's a blank canvas. Um, whatever sauce you pair with your tofu, providing you got enough water out, will take on the flavor of that sauce. It's awesome. So whatever dressing sauce, this peanut sauce that is going to turn into a peanut sauce tofu, it's going to be so good. I want to add one more thing really quick. Um, Please. People are concerned about calcium intake. I want to tell you that um, most tofu has a pretty fair amount of calcium. Um, the way tofu is made, it, it is solidified soy milk. Basically, you take soy milk um, and you, you do this process called coagulation, and it uses calcium sulfate. And because of the calcium sulfate in this process, it is a high calcium food. So if calcium is of concern to you, um, you want to try to get more calcium in your diet, perhaps you're lactose intolerant, you avoid milk or whatever, um, the tofu is a great source of that. And Shelly, um, can you speak to the nutritional values uh, of what RS just made? Obviously, we know about tofu, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so carrots have, um, you know, all kinds of vitamins in them and fiber as well. Um, most notably, they have vitamin A and beta carotene. So um, this, uh, this is excellent for eyesight. Um, vitamin K, there's some calcium in carrots. Um, cabbage is also fantastic. It's a, a member of the cruci cruciferous family. You might get a little gassy with it, but it's, um, it's very healthy and good for you. Lots of fiber there and vitamins and minerals. And this is colorful. Again, cannot emphasize the importance of having a colorful diet um, because you get different nutrients for every color you introduce. You've got green and you've got orange, different nutrient compositions in both of those. So you wanna to try to have a rainbow as much as you can. So this is a beautiful plate. Thank you, very kind. And I'll give you my address after and you can send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Let's move on to our next thing. And one last thing I, I want to mention, just with Shelly bringing that up about colorful, I bring this up a lot too. I'm all about texture. I like crunchy things with soft things. So that's why I like the shredded cabbage and carrots along with the soft noodles and like the tofu. It's a nice mm -hmm. combo. And as I always say, guys, this is not limited to what I just made. You can put bell peppers, you can put cucumbers, you know, whatever vegetables you like that rice noodle, or if you want to use another kind of noodle, that's totally fine. Again, use my recipes as a guide, not as a strict, um, you know, direction of what to do. Yeah, there so, are no recipes. <laughs> there are no recipes in my kitchen. So I'd like to oh. move on to the next thing. Is that okay? One more question I see. I'm sure. going to jump, jump ahead, Franklin. What type of texture does tofu have? So the more water you have pressed out of it, the firmer it is. You could compare the most firmly pressed tofu with zero water like chicken. Like it has a texture that is like a satisfying. I used to eat meat. The more I learn about it, the, the less, you know, I, I, I'm plant-based now. I eat a lot of tofu. Um, but the less water it has, the more texture. So if you're a, a big meat eater trying to get away from that, tofu um, is an excellent option. Awesome. Cool. Um, so keeping with the theme of using multiple, uh, the same ingredient in multiple ways to make packed lunches easy, I'm moving on to quinoa. Um, I'll let Shelly talk about the nutritional benefits of quinoa in a moment, but um, if you go back to one of the earlier sessions, I think Shelly and I might have done together, or maybe I did on my own, about whole grains. Um, I know it's not technically a grain, it's a seed or whatever, but quinoa is awesome. I love it. It's super versatile. You all are going to see, I'm going to use the same batch of quinoa in two different ways to make two very different lunches. So again, this is kind of what I'm talking about in terms of using the same ingredients. So all I did was cook this quinoa. It takes about 15, 20 minutes to cook. Super easy. If you have any questions, go back and watch our whole grain, um, cooking demonstration. Again, you can sub whatever other whole grain you want if you don't want to do quinoa, um, but you do want to use a grain for this. This is part of the part of the, the, the fun of this particular thing. So I did, this was three quarters of a cup of dry quinoa, and that's a lot of cooked quinoa. So again, when it comes to value, um, it's a big deal. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make a quinoa salad, and then I'm going to do a quinoa kind of wrap type deal. So mm -hmm. I'm using the same batch of quinoa. Uh, and these are two different lunches. So I'm making everything substantial enough and filling enough to be for one person to eat for lunch, to not be hungry. I'm not a snacker. I don't like to, you know, 
eat a bunch of stuff that's going to not be not good for me, you know, in between meals, I like to eat a meal, but, you know, use that as a guide, however you want. So I'm going to use a good amount of this quinoa because this is really going to be the substance of my salad. Everything else is kind of going to be like, you know, flavor, you know, giving it some, some other stuff. So I used about half of this quinoa here. And then I've got a few things that I chopped up ahead of time. I've got some diced up carrots. I've got some green onions. I've got a few cherry tomatoes from my garden, holler on that. I'm not doing so great with my tomatoes, but these ones were nice. You're not the only one. It's not a good yeah. year. Yeah, that's what no. everyone keeps telling yeah. me. Is it's Nobody I talked to. <laughs> yeah, uh, I am gonna use a little bit of uh, goat cheese. This is another occasion where I like, I, I think the goat cheese is yummy and I think it, there's not really a great plant-based substitute for it. Um, and I like it, but you can totally skip it um, or use something else, feta or, or not, whatever you want. So I'm just putting a few of these elements, it's the same batch of cilantro I had chopped up. So I'm, I'm really just using a lot of the same stuff, guys, to, to, um, to, to make my salad. So I've got, oh, and I have these cucumbers that I chopped up. So if you see, again, we've got a nice colorful um, salad and the quinoa is really gonna be the substance of the salad. And this is pretty much ready to go. Now, again, as I said for the last one, you wanna separate your dressing. If I were to dress this now, it would be yummy in some ways. It would soak up some of the flavor, but if I made this now, by the time like tomorrow lunchtime comes around, then it might be kind of soggy and mushy and that's not as fun. You could dress this the morning of, like if you're making this in the morning, like eight in the morning and you're gonna eat it at like noon, that's a little bit more doable. I would, I would say that you can do that, but I'm doing this the night before. So I especially like to keep this separate. Uh, and I'm not gonna make it right now because it's not a great use of time, but all I'm gonna do for this is um, lemon juice. I'm using pre-packaged lemon juice. I didn't have time to squeeze lemons. Um, so I'm gonna use lemon juice, olive oil, salt and pepper. I'm gonna put it into a jar. And then when I take my lunch with me, I take this and I take the dressing separately. Make sure you have a lid that works or put it in a plastic bag. I've had that happen many times where dressing or sauce spills everywhere. And that's lunch number two. I mean, again, how easy was that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And, and um, as I get ready, so I'm gonna use similar ingredients with this for a different lunch in a moment. Shelly, I wanna give you a chance to, 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 to jump in and if anything I've talked about if you want. But so I'm gonna put this away, guys. So um, that's quinoa salad. It's awesome. Uh, so you want me to chat about quinoa for a second? Sure. That would, I think okay. that, would be, that would be good. Yeah. So, so like you said, it's a seed. Um, quinoa, Q-U-I-N-O-A. It's kind of a weird word. Q-U-I-N. It looks like quinoa. Um, it is a seed. It's an edible seed. It is actually classified as a whole grain. So you're, you're actually checking that box perfectly. Um, comes in a bunch of different colors, black, red, yellow, white. Um, it's a plant that's been cultivated for about 5,000 years. It's indigenous to the Andean region of South America, um, specifically Bolivia, Ecuador, Chile, Peru. Um, after the seeds are harvested, they undergo processing to remove the natural saponins, which are a bitter tasting chemical compound um, that acts as kind of a natural pesticide for the plant. Um, it's harvested harvested by hand usually. Um, and then uh, in the US seed varieties that, that are more consistent maturity, they're selected to allow the processing process involved there after it's hand um, harvested. Um, it's a seed, it's a whole grain, uh, source of plant protein fiber. Uh, a cup of cooked quinoa provides about eight grams of protein and five grams of fiber. So it is a powerhouse. A lot sometimes, but um, it has a good amount of protein. Um, it is a complete protein. That's why you've heard so much about quinoa lately. Um, has again all nine essential amino acids that our body can't make on 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 its own. Um, it's gluten free, so if you have gluten intolerance or have celiacs, then that's a really good option for you. Um, so that's quinoa, and it's a, it's a amazing food, and I'm super happy that it's getting more and more popular. And Shelly, we have a question. Um, are tortilla shells a good alternative to bread when watching car carbs? 
Um, if you're watching, I mean, you, you can substitute them, but I, I would go with whole grain, if at all possible. A lot of tortillas are flour, so corn or whole grain would be best. Um, but carbohydrates are really necessary, so that, that's a whole other comment, a um, whole other discussion. So. Okay, and another question is, what other quick, grains just... can you use besides quinoa? Um, you, you could use... Um, Brown rice, you could use mm -hmm. wild rice, you could use farro, you could use, um, again, go back and watch our whole, we did a whole session on whole grains, mm -hmm. and you can pretty much use any of them. And these are inexpensive, you can buy quinoa, you can literally buy everywhere now. Um, and it's super easy, you just boil it in water and drain it. Um, mm -hmm. That's the easiest thing. So if you have questions about what whole grains, please go back and watch that that past show we did and we talked all about different whole grains. Yeah, I you can also just quick... look up whole grain. Go ahead. <laughs> and you'll get a say, list. I mentioned uh, baby spinach and why I like it so much for packed lunches. I forgot to mention, this is an easy way to pack in a little extra nutrition. So I got a bag of just baby spinach mm -hmm. washed, ready to go. And all I'm gonna do for my quinoa salad, I'm just gonna throw a little here in the corner and um, you know, just an easy way to add some nutrition to your lunch. So okay, so I'm going to piggyback on the spinach now. <laughs> um, you're going to dress this with uh, with lemon juice, right? Correct. Okay, so so spinach is high in iron, and the best way to absorb iron is to add vitamin C, and lemons have vitamin C. So if you're anemic or struggle with anemia or need more iron in your diet, then uh, pairing any kind of high iron food along with some kind of citrus is going to be a really good bet for you. So this is a really decent uh, meal with a good amount of iron that's easy to absorb. And Shelly, how would one know if they're anemic other than just doing some blood work? That. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, you, you, anemia presents itself differently to different people. So, you know, pale, uh, fatigue, um, if you're a woman, you have heavy menstrual cycle, like your best bet is to go to the doctor and really have them check you over and make sure you're not. So, but, but being tired is a, is a hallmark, um, symptom of it, but, but it could be any other thing making you tired. So yeah. if and you suspect, the, then go. And in the past, you've recommended at least one to two times a year, uh, getting blood work done. I, I recommend getting a fasting lipid panel to check cholesterol, get a baseline for that. And vitamin D would be a good one. That would be another reason why you might be tired, but we're going off into a different direction now. Um, but if you feel like anemia could be something that you're struggling with, or um, if you are really anemic right after your injury, you, you might want to just get checked and have your doctor check if, if you have low energy levels, that kind of thing. Okay, thanks. And by the way, a question was asked about past sessions being available on our website. They are, if you go to NorCalSCI.org, there's a tab uh, that says videos. You scroll over the tab and there's a virtual education videos section uh, mm -hmm. that houses all the uh, past presentations uh, of both Shelly and RHS, including uh, everyone else that we've uh, done. So help yourself to all the past presentations there. And reach Thanks. out to Franklin if you have any questions about the nutrition aspect of any of that. I, I don't mind getting questions um, after the fact. Me too. Okay, should we go to number three? Let's do it. Okay, so remember we had our quinoa, we made a quinoa salad. Now I'm going to use quinoa, but in a wrap format. Um, I am using, right after Shelly said, whole, you know, flour and stuff, like or this is probably not the healthiest choice, but I'm just using lavash bread. This is a Middle Eastern flatbread. Uh, they sell it at Trader Joe's. They sell it at other places too. I really like this, um, even though it's not a whole grain, because I like how it holds up. I like that it doesn't rip. If you don't want to use this or you can't find it, you can use a tortilla, just like Shelly said, preferably a whole grain. Um, but I want to take a moment to just talk about wrap construction because I've had a lot of very not so tasty wraps. And I'm talking like at a place that charges you 10 bucks for a wrap. And uh, I want to tell you my principle on how making a very tasty wrap. And you'll see where this goes because I'm going to make two wraps. So I have three components to a, a good tasty wrap. Number one is substance or body. What goes in it that's giving you like fulfillment, you know, filling your belly, tasting good, like giving you a lot of the body of the wrap. 
The second component is what I call sauciness or creaminess. So you don't want a dry wrap. I feel like a lot of sandwiches and wraps I have often that are mediocre, they're just dry. And I'm not a mayo person. I don't want to just slather everything in mayo. Um, so what's the sauciness, creaminess? And it doesn't have to be like something creamy, creamy. I mean, avocado is a good choice for that. So you'll see how I use that. The third component and final component to a successful wrap, I think is freshness. So fresh herbs, uh, the baby spinach, something to kind of just brighten up the, uh, the wrap. So um, I, those are my, my three key things, substance, sauciness slash creaminess and freshness. So you'll see, cause I'm gonna make a couple different versions where this goes. So I'm taking this bread out I like it because it's also rectangular, so it helps me with my wrap construction. And here's what I'm going to do. That quinoa that I had earlier, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to take some of that. I'm going to spoon it on here. So this is my substance. This is the main substance for my wrap, right? I've got some quinoa. You want to not overfill it, probably put less than you think. And then I am also gonna put some, here we go, white beans. These are just canned white beans. I drained these earlier. Um, you can use any bean you like. This is again, just to give it a little more substance, a little more yumminess. Um, again, you can use anything else to substitute, but in this case, I'm using uh, white beans. I really like these, these are like my favorite. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit of white beans in here. And these are again, just straight out of the can. I did rinse them off because I don't like that like, you know, soupy bean component that a lot of canned beans have. So I've got that, that's my substance. Now my creaminess is going to come from avocado. In this case, actually from two things, but I've got avocado. I sliced this a little bit earlier. So I'm just taking it out of its skin and my avocado. So this is super, super easy, guys. Just, uh, and again, just let your imagination go wild. So, yeah, that's probably good. So a little, about a half of a small avocado that I used. So I've got my avocado. Let's see, I've got that. And now I need my, um, another component of my sauciness as well as my freshness. So let's go over here. This is where, again, my good friend, this $2 bag of baby spinach goes so far. So now I'm just going to, lay a lot of this spinach on here. And this is a, one of those things, I've talked about this before. If you're like not into eating greens or you think you don't like it, this is an easy way to just sneak it into your food. You probably won't even taste it. Um, so that's it. And then the last component, I'm just using some jarred salsa. So I'm using a uh, pepita, like pumpkin seed salsa. You can use any salsa you like. You can use hummus. You could use, um, you know, any sauce you get at the store that you like. Um, Obviously, be careful of the, of the health components of it. I like salsa because as Shelly and I have talked about many times, it doesn't really have a lot of bad stuff in it. There's not a lot of calories and it gives it a really nice flavor. So I'm gonna just slather a bunch of this salsa on here and that's gonna really moisten everything and give it a nice flavor. And then pray for me, this is the hardest part. I go flip over. I reach and I kind of tuck, tuck this in as much as I can. I usually try to leave one end a little less filled as I roll and then I kind of pinch this end shut. And now this is decent. Um, what I like to use for a wrap is aluminum foil. I use a thin piece of aluminum foil. So I'll just put this down here. And like I said, I kind of pinch it shut here. I close one end and then I roll and then I kind of close the other end. That like looks professional. Nice. That's from a California kid growing up with a lot of burritos. So um, watching, <laughs> watching many uh, uh, people at uh, taquerias. So that's a nice wrap right there. And mm -hmm. um, you can cut it in half, you can do whatever, but I'll just stick this in the fridge and then it's ready to go. And the nice thing about doing it this way is that it doesn't get soggy. It doesn't get too um, you know, gross or anything. If you put too much wet stuff in there, then your bread is gonna get wet. Um, so you wanna just keep, kind of keep an eye on that. I know that's like next level food nerdiness, but I'll just mention it because it's worth knowing. So that's wrap number one. 
Yeah, it almost looks like you put the um, the salsa on top of the ingredients so it didn't like really make contact with the bread too. That's exactly it. I tried to, and I didn't do it as good. I wasn't keeping track right then, but that's exactly right. I would put the salsa more into the quinoa and the avocado and the on beans. On top of the spinach. It's so good. Yeah. Exactly. And the spinach is kind of like a barrier um, to keep everything fresh. So that's wrap number one. And look, we still have quinoa left. So I could probably make one or two more of these to have. Um, but we're going to actually go into a different direction. We're going to make another wrap using the same bread, just different ingredients. But before we do, Shelly, anything to add? Um, well, I just wanted to make a quick plug for avocado. I don't think, do I need to do this, people? I don't think I need to make I a really plug for avocado. <laughs> Um, but but I do want to say that there was a recent study that found that eating eating a little avocado um, every so often was associated with lower levels of LDL, which is the small dense LDL particle cholesterol, um, oxidized LDL in, in adults um, with overweight or obesity, and, and found that avocados helped reduce the LDL particles. So it was quite an interesting study, and um, and the the main work that I have is, is cardiovascular disease prevention uh, in the spinal cord injury population. And, and it's, it's very high. It's a 228% mortality rate higher than those without spinal cord injury. So if eating a little avocado once in a while is going to offset negative effects there, then um, have a little avocado. But avocado does have a pretty large amount of healthy fat to it. So if you're trying to um, watch your weight or lose weight, just a small amount, okay? Don't 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 try to prevent heart disease by eating six avocados a day. That's all I'm saying. Although uh, it would Shelley, be fine. <laughs> Shelly, I have a question for you. Uh, what did you say to pair to pair iron with in order to absorb it better? <laughs> Vitamin C, also known as ascorbic <laughs> acid. Um, so any kind of citrus, orange, lemon, grapefruit, um, whatever iron. Spinach is a high iron. It's a great you know, iron food. Also, if you're taking iron supplements, taking them with a glass of like pulpy orange juice or, or, you know, a sliced up orange or something like that. Iron plus vitamin C together. Okay. And this person is asking if they can eat avocados every day. I guess the answer is yes. A small amount, uh, depending on what your, you know, what your weight status is. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to eat too much fat, healthy fat, even because it has more calories than protein and carbs. Um, but avocado is one of those things that has good fiber, good amount of health benefit, but you want to kind of keep it to a couple, couple wedges a day. Don't get yourself a big avocado and eat it every single day, but, but a little avocado every day is really good for you. Okay. I just, I ended up just making a second wrap exactly like the first, um, because I wanted to prove to myself that I should have put the salt somewhere in the middle. So, um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's where I'm at. Um, let's change directions and make a little bit of a different flavor wrap. I'm using the same uh, uh, bread, the lavash bread, but I'm going to go in a different direction and kind of go with an Indian style wrap. And again, I'm talking a lot about convenience. Remember what I said earlier about using convenience to your advantage. Here is a way to do that. This is a vacuum packed my wife tells me like I should be a sponsor for Trader Joe's because I <laughs> talk so much about their products. I agree with that. I honestly, I like a lot of their stuff. I actually don't like a lot of their stuff, their produce in general, um, not some of this bag stuff, but some of their produce is pretty poor quality, but I do like a lot of their stuff. So I will admit that. So this is just um, a little vacuum pack thing of curried vegetables. They have like four or five different flavors, but again, you could find this in like the like ethnic food aisle, whatever they call it at like a Safeway. I've seen it. It's just like a pre-made like curried vegetables. If you have like leftover chili, if you made like a, you know, something like a stew the night before and you have a little leftover, maybe some kind of like long cooked, yeah, stewy type thing or shredded meat or beans or something, use that. So I'm just using this to make it easy to show you. I don't even have to cook it. So this time I'm using this as my body. Um, I'm going to go back to my good friend, the spinach. I'm gonna put it down first because this is a little more wet and I don't want the bread to get too soggy. So now I just spoon, and this is like, I think less than $2 for this bag. Um, so again, really good value. They have one with like lentils. They have one with like um, some other vegetables. So I use about half of this bag 
and that's my curried vegetables on a bed of spinach. And then this time, what am I gonna put in? Oh yeah, instead of white beans, I have chickpeas. So same thing, I drain these, these are just canned chickpeas. And I'm just gonna take a couple spoonfuls of chickpeas. So don't tell me that eating plant-based can't have protein. Guys, I don't, I don't wanna hear that anymore. I don't like these, uh, when people try to think, well, where do you get your protein from? Just like Shelly said, you probably don't need as much protein as you think, but um, this is a great source. And last but not least for this one, I'm going to add just a little bit of yogurt. If you're fully plant-based, you could use, um, you know, plant-based yogurt, um, cashew yogurt, something like that. But um, I like this just to give it that level of, remember what I was saying about like a creaminess um, to, the, to, the, uh, to the wrap. And I will say, I'm gonna do a quick plug. I'm gonna stand up for non-Greek yogurt. I know Greek yogurt is like the trend still and everyone wants to always eat Greek yogurt. I actually think regular yogurt is better for sauces and, and for cooking. Greek yogurt has a lot of the liquid drained out of it. Um, so if you're using it for like a sauce or something, then you have to end up adding some kind of liquid back into it. Otherwise it's really kind of dry. So I'm just, I like, this is just plain old, um, normal yogurt. And again, you can skip this, you can do something else. Uh, I'm not going to do much. Um, I'm just going to add a little, sorry, I should move that so you can see it just a little drizzle. And I'm also a spicy person. So if it was for me, I'd probably add a bunch of hot sauce into this, but you could add, um, if you're into pickles, you could add some kind of pickled vegetable into this pickled jalapenos, you know, whatever you want, let your imagination run wild, but here we go, we got wrap number two, ready to go. Oh, actually, I've got a little cilantro here, I just remembered. And you yeah. know what, for good, good measure, I've got a little tofu. So I'm just gonna put a couple of cubes of this in there. Oh my gosh, and I've I'm got hungry a little now. Bit of cilantro <laughs> on top. And then, here we go. Pray for You've me. You've yourself this time, Arash. This here looks we go. so good. Remember, I keep one end kind of emptier because I'm gonna pinch this end shut. I pull it in as much as I can. And then I'm gonna wrap it in foil and another wrap ready to go. So we got four lunches done. I only have one more to talk about. So um, yeah, any questions or Shelly, any comments, anything? Um, we, we keep talking about plant-based. That's primarily most of your, your um, foods coming from fruits, veggies and whole grains. But that doesn't mean there's no room for other things. I don't know what percentage you, you like, but I like 90% plant-based, 10% other. So that yogurt falls in other, eggs fall in other. The more closely to plant-based you get, the, the more health benefits you get. Um, and the, all of these things look like they could easily be meals as well, like, like dinner and lunch. I mean, like, so these are quick, easy to take on the road, that kind of thing, uh, convenient tasty, nutritious, but um, honestly, I would eat that wrap you just made for dinner easy with a salad. Yeah, you could, you could also warm it up. If you're doing it for dinner, you could heat up your bread a little, or if you're doing it with a tortilla, you could heat it up and then eat it that way. Um, and with the wraps, these are going to be just fine till tomorrow, as long as I don't put too much stuff in there, like you saw. Um, but if you wanted to do them in the morning and then you can add more like sauces and things you can. So um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, again, it's just a matter of you guys saw, I'm not using complicated ingredients. I'm using a lot of pre-prepped um, things. And that's also what's gonna go for the last item. So I'm, oh, perfect, we're good with time. So I'm gonna um, just talk about um, a boring old salad. Who eats a salad for lunch? So I, I struggle because sometimes people are like, oh, a salad or for lunch. And, to me, if you want to eat a salad for lunch, it has to have, I'll speak for myself, it has to have some something in it to fill me up and make it more interesting than just like vegetables. Because I feel like if you just eat vegetable, like lettuce and cucumber in your salad, you're going to be hungry like an hour later. And that's when you might get in trouble and like go and like snack and eat something that might not be as good for you. So I'm going to show you how to make a salad that's substantial and delicious. I have another one of these nice big containers. I really, again, recommend getting a large, this is plastic too, BPA free. Um, so yeah, I recommend that just because of my weak hands. I like the lighter weight um, plastic. 
So all I did, guys, this is just packaged spring mix, straight out of the package. Spring mix is your friend. At Safeway, it's always $5 for like a giant one pound, two pound, whatever it is, like a huge thing of spring mix. So it is not expensive um, to do this right. We're gonna talk about how to make a good, tasty filling salad. So we've got some spring mix. These are just cucumbers I chopped up earlier. Now, what else are we gonna put in there? What did I say earlier? Just using the same ingredients in multiple ways. So I've got some of my chickpeas. I'm gonna throw a little bit of the chickpeas in here. I've got some of my white beans. Again, I had these already going, so I'm going to throw a couple of these in here. Detail box, how perfectly you're, you're laying this out. It's so pretty. Well, I, I just think uh, I'm a big believer that good looking food um, makes you want to eat it. And um, One of the I, still, I still have this other block of tofu that's untouched that I cooked earlier, but I have a few cubes left over here. So why not? I'm just going to throw a couple cubes of tofu. Again, if you're a, a meat eater, rotisserie chicken, if you have like a little bit of rotisserie chicken left over or something like that, this would be a good use. But I like the beans and the combo. And, um, and then let's see, there was a, what else did I want to put in here? Uh, oh yeah, the eggs. That's right. The whole reason, the whole thing where I started. So I hard boiled these eggs. I did them for seven minutes. I put them into an ice bath. And then I've got, if you've never used this, it's your friend. If you like hard boiled eggs. It's an egg slicer. You just take your hard boiled egg that I peeled and sorry, got some cilantro on it. So you just lay it down here. And then you just go like this. Bada bing, bada boom. And look at that. Beautiful. Perfect yellow, not oh gray, not green, not overcooked. You can do so an egg perfect. like that. Um, that, that lunch is full of protein. That is a higher protein lunch. Like you got your egg, two kinds of beans, your tofu. So if you're worried about protein, that'll work. <laughs> I'm even going to add a little bit of um, avocado because yes, I am obsessed with avocado and I think it makes everything better. You need and an avocado on your salad, okay? You just do. What's that? You need some avocado on a salad. You need some avocado on the salad. So here we go. I've got my avocado ready to go. So please don't tell me that a salad is boring. Um, Not at all. <laughs> other things you can put in here. I ran out of tomatoes, but obviously tomatoes, any, any vegetable you like. I don't need to list every vegetable out there, but um, you could put, I also like to often put like pumpkin seeds into the salad. Um, mm -hmm. We've talked in previous sessions about how to like hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds, flaxseed, these like things that are really packed with nutrition mm -hmm. that you can integrate into your food. If you don't know how to integrate it, as I've said in a previous session, smoothies are the easiest ways. You just throw them into a blender and you don't even taste them. But in other ways right here, you could just throw a handful of pumpkin seeds. They add a little bit of crunch, um, you know, any kind of like, you know, toasted nut or something. As Shelly always says, sorry to steal your line, Shelly, but be careful with nuts because they're very high in calories and fat. But um, yeah, we got ourselves a nice little green salad here, avocado, exactly. And I'm, I'm gonna reiterate this point one more time. Keep your dressing separate. Keep your dressing separate in a separate container. And I even like to like put it in a container and kind of tuck it into this same container. And then everything is all here ready to go. So check out this awesome, awesome salad. Beautiful. That's full of, full of, um, of delicious things. And when you're ready to dress it, you pour the dressing on, you close this up, you shake it up and um, you're good to go. So. As you guys can see, I'm, I'm pretty much done. I know we might, I'm fine to stay on for some more questions or Shelly, obviously I've been talking for a bit if you have stuff to add, but I just want to end by saying I didn't use a lot of different ingredients. I used a few ingredients in different ways and I went with an Indian flavored wrap. I went with a, I don't know, with salsa, kind of a Mexican flavor. I don't know what you want to call it, but the quinoa wrap, we got a green salad, we got a Vietnamese uh, rice noodle salad. So variety Gorgeous. of flavors and food and healthy and delicious um that you can do instead of you know something that that might be boring so i'll uh, I'm, I'm pretty much done with all this uh, i'm happy to take questions or pass it to you shelly yeah there are a couple of questions yeah uh on the indian wrap uh arash i know you've been saying that some of the ingredients are available most everywhere but this person i guess doesn't have a uh, trader joe's in their area would you say that the 
the ingredients you use are widely available at typical grocery stores? So here's what you could do. If it's not available, let's let's pivot and make it a little easier. Do you like chili? Um, you can get canned chili if you haven't made it yourself. Get yourself like a nice, ideally like a healthier canned chili. There are some good ones out there. Um, so that's that's something you can use in place of that. If you have a, you know, like I said, if you made something, this is where I said planning really helps. If you make some chili, if you make a big pot of beans, if you're a meat eater and you Curry, make some like shredded meat or a rotisserie chicken, whatever you want, that's just, I use that because I had it and I know that a lot of stores do have that. But if you don't, go to something else, go into the canned food section of your store where canned soup is. And you might find some something really tasty there um, or use leftovers or just skip the curry and use just beans and some other things, give it flavor in a different way. But remember, yeah. substance, sauciness and freshness. Those are my three components of your wrap. You can make it however you want, get those components and make a really tasty wrap. If you do get something convenience or canned or packaged, just be mindful of sodium content. Um, uh, it's helpful if you have a couple of options in front of you in the store to take a look at the labels, uh, look at the serving size, and then look at the sodium content and compare the two and cho choose the lowest sodium content that you can get in the canned and packaged stuff. Okay. But definitely, I mean, I'm a big proponent of, of convenient foods. That's great. Just be mindful of sodium and added sugar too. So. Thank you, Shelly. All right, next question. On the wrap that you use, you use this bread that's called lavash. Um, what would you compare it closest to, like a wheat bread? Yeah, I use, it's a whole wheat lavash. So it's it's just made from wheat. Like I said, I'm sorry, it's not the healthiest thing, but I, in this case, I substitute a little bit of health for um, the success of the wrap and that it's it doesn't break. Um, if you're gonna use tortillas, um, they usually don't make corn tortillas very big, but don't use corn tortillas. They rip really easily. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, flour, these days they have so many different types of um, whole grain tortillas, spinach, and they have even, they call them wraps. They're specifically made. So they're the same thing. They, they stretch and they have a little bit of like give to them, um, but you can use any of those things. And, and if absolutely, you literally can't find anything else out there, just use a flour tortilla, forgive me, Shelly, but add that nutrition in in other ways. Like you saw yeah, what else- Yeah, it with nutrition. Here. That's you know, fine. Also okay. pita bread. Some fresh pita is great. Just cut them in half and you can stuff pita with, with things too. Not a wrap. And you could do but... the same thing as a sandwich. If you're into sandwiches, it's a little harder with, the, with, with, with constructing it, but especially if you have like a roll or something, so it kind of can like sit in there. You can use the same things in a roll, just wrap it really well, keep everything tight in there. And then when you're ready to eat, it'll be a little bit easier to, to eat. Okay, mm -hmm. next question. Which bread is the healthiest? <laughs> My kids hate wheat products. Ouch. <laughs> um, you know what? They make so many different whole wheat, whole grain products. Um, you know, your best bet would just be to keep trying until you can. And then, and then also think about what you're putting on it too. So if you can entice them by putting something yummy on it or toasting it or, you know, God, cut the crust off if you have to, <laughs> but, um, but play around with um, different whole, there's a lot of different whole grain breads out there. It's way more prevalent than it ever used to be. So just keep trying, don't give up. Okay. Don't go to uh, Wonder, Wonder Bread. Right. <laughs> I believe this will be our last question. Uh, Arash, on the last salad that you made, uh, are you using the, the peanut uh, sauce on it or any kind of dressing? Oh, good question. Sorry, I didn't clarify that. I'm just going to use, I'm not going to use the peanut sauce uh, for spring mix. It's like such a delicate kind of lettuce. If I was using like romaine or like even the shredded cabbage, you could totally use um, a peanut sauce or something like that. I'm just going to make a very simple vinaigrette. Um, so just vinegar, olive oil, salt, pepper, something like that. Um, and uh, again, if you have any questions about that kind of thing, Go back and watch. We did two sessions ago. We did a whole thing on sauces and 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 uh, kind of sauces and salsas and whatnot. So you might find some great info in there. Um, and that yeah, salad just you know. just did, um, you could do the lemon and a little olive oil, salt and pepper too, right? So totally. that salad you totally. just did is a high iron salad. So throwing the lemon juice on top of that again with the absorption for the iron. That's a a lot of iron in that salad, with the beans and the spinach. Yep. 
And Arash, uh, you're suggesting that that salad that you just made, uh, that's going to fill you fill you up pretty well, and it's going to keep you from having kind of a, an hour later need for some more uh, food. Yeah, I think so. Right. And if it's if what you saw doesn't seem like enough, then just add a little bit more of the beans and add another egg, or I, you know, again, I'll uh, be mindful of the the not you know not going overboard with any one thing, but um, yeah, to me, that's a pretty solid meal because I added tofu, I added white beans, garbanzo beans, avocado, egg, and then the salad. So all that stuff is going to help me fill my belly. And if I'm really, really hungry still, then maybe I'll just pack like something, you know, on the side, a couple crackers or something to go along with it. But yeah. uh, if it doesn't look like enough, then just add a little bit more, make it a bigger salad, you know. Do, it's you, do, beautiful. You. Remember volume. If you eat a lot of, of volume, that helps your stomach feel nice and satisfied. If you're eating like a tiny bird and eating tiny little portions, it, it, it's not as satisfying. I mean, the, the eyes see it and, and you can feel it in your stomach. So um, big salads like that are, are healthy and they're filling. I love quantity. I'm a big uh, quantity person. I've talked about this before. I like a lot of food. So as I've shifted to eating healthier and healthier and healthier, I find that when I can fill my belly, and I love, Shelly, you always bring this up in your presentations, calorie density. I have a slide like baked into my head, but like I love to eat a lot of something that doesn't have a lot of calories because then I can enjoy it and I know I'm not, you know, unhealthy about it. So spring mix, lettuce, there's almost no calories in it. You're almost using more by chewing. Um, so if you just throw a bunch of lettuce in there, that's, that's great. I like to fill my belly with all that good stuff then then you know fill it with like something fried or something where a couple of bites will give you the same amount of calories mm -hmm. yeah and arash i know that you always talk about uh, your diet really helping you with avoiding constipation and you know having a good bowel sort of uh, program so uh, i think everything that you've done tonight just uh, underscores that yeah. very much that's that's a huge 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 component in all of my cooking um i won't bore you with the dirty details but i have over the years, um, really shifted away from any kind of medicine, any kind of um, suppository, any of that stuff, um, just purely pretty much through diet. And that's partially why I went with like, kind of like Shelly, I'm on like a 90, 95% plant-based diet. So, um, so that's really the reason why I just found that when I ate meat or when I ate cheese or something, it would just make that whole process a lot harder. So um, yeah, everything I make, I, I stand by very firmly that it will help you with your uh, with your, your bowel and bladder program. And Shelly, um, speaking from your sort of GI experience, this type of food passes through your intestines, you know, much easier and just, uh, you, you don't feel constipated, I guess, because of that, right? Yeah, this, I, I will, until the day I die, I will advocate for a plant-based diet for my GI population, for my spinal cord population, basically for my family, my friends, everybody, um, because um, you're getting a big mix of two different kinds of fiber in there, as well as maximum nutrition with all the vitamins and minerals. Um, there is there is 100% a, a lot to be said for having a plant-based diet. Um, and there's enough research out there that, that backs it up too. So um, I've had some really good patient outcomes with patients who have gone plant-based and I, I will stand by that. Excellent. All righty. Thank you so much, Arash. Thank you, Shelly. Um, everyone, as I mentioned, we've been recording the, tonight's presentation. So it'll be in everyone's uh, inbox tomorrow morning. And there is, uh, there is Sorry, uh, my daughter. Uh, just, yeah, da daughter. She's still back, so I figured I'd have her say hi. <laughs> Hi! Oh my goodness! So we will be uh, sending a copy of the recording to everyone's inboxes by tomorrow morning at uh, eight o'clock California time. And uh, next month, Shelly and Arash are going to part ways, and they're going to do their own individual session. And then we'll come back in uh, in October when they're going to do a joint session again. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Hope you uh, enjoyed the presentation. Uh, I know some of you are probably drooling all throughout the presentation, but uh, that's uh, that's great. Uh, that's when we know that uh, we're doing a great job for you guys. Thank you, Arash. Really appreciate uh, welcoming us into your kitchen and to your home. And please give our love to your videographer. She does a splendid job every yeah. night. And Thank thanks, for Shelley, for, uh, for everything that you provide uh, our, our audience with. So have a good night, everyone. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Shelley. Thanks for coming. Bye, Arash. Bye -bye.